The preceding program was sponsored by PokerStars.com. Last night on The Big Game, the heavyweight rematch between Tony G and Phil Hellmuth nearly ended in a first round KO. All right, I call. There you go, welcome to the game. <laughs> just flops the nuts just off the bat. One hand down, 149 to go. And with three quarters of Phil's chips in his stack, Tony dialed up his verbal assault. I own you. You understand, Phil? I own you. Nice hand. Here's your coach. <laughs> your coach be jumping up and down. Now a short stacked Brad and his impromptu coach Lane Flack will have to regroup for Phil to finally get even. It's just so scary how bad I went on the show. And after taking down a few early pots. Wow, guy can. There we go. Our loose cannons run for the passport suffered a major setback on the last hand of the night. I call. I thought you were never going to call. Two pair. Good hand. Tonight, find out if the ex-cop can shake it off and continue his quest to apprehend the title on the big game. I'm glad I had a good night's sleep. Welcome to Las Vegas, home of the big game. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Scott Huff, and tonight the action continues at the most exclusive game in town. There's nearly a million dollars in play as world champs, business tycoons, Hollywood elite, and a lucky internet qualifier all try to get their piece. In the sixth seat is the 05 world champ, Joe Hashem. Last night, this Australian put the loose cannon on the Barbie. He's up 28K. Jose Nacho Barbero is in the casa. The Argentinian pro started with 100K, and now he's up over $20,000. Tony G flopped the nuts twice last night against Phil Helmuth, but at least he's been nice about it. Not. He's up over 88K. Hollywood actress Jennifer Tilly is unfortunately the buffer zone between Tony G and Phil this week. So far, she's stuck half her buy-in. The loose cannon is 51-year-old Ken Renkowski. The retired cop traded in his badge for an apron and now runs a coffee shop in British Columbia. After taking down perps and working undercover, these days, Ken prefers to take down pox. He's down 8,200. And our final player is the poker brat, Phil Helmuth. He called off three quarters of his stack to Tony G on the first hand last night, and he's with Amanda Leatherman. Phil, tough first night out there. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, come on. I mean, how bad can it be? I'm playing 100,000 buy-in poker games. I'm completely blessed in life, so yeah, it was a rough first night. Well, you know what? You have your life coach here, or mental coach, or whatever you want to call him, Lane Flack is here <laughs> for you. Poker consultant. All right. What is he doing here? <laughs> I mean, I, look, I, I love Lane, and he has a great poker mind, and I thought, you know, let him come and, and kind of see what I'm doing, and, and we'll talk about some hands, and uh, he's been fantastic. So, I mean, my, my bad night had nothing to do with him. We'll keep him here then. Good luck. Thanks. Let's take a look at the loose cannon rules. Each cannon is staked $100,000 to play. He keeps all profits above the initial $100,000. And at season's end, the loose cannon who's won the most money earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth $50,000. And the cop's going to have to make a major case to best the massive profit of our leading loose cannon, Massimiliano Martinez. Ken's the last man standing between Max and that NAPT passport. I guess, unlike police work, this is a place where a bust is bad. <laughs> the action will begin on hand 23 and Nacho Barbero, seven deuce, lets it go. Joe Hashem, jack nine. Raises to 1,200. Cannon, a seven. Let's it go, Helmuth out. Tilly, folds. Tony G with the queen seven. Qualify? Makes the call. Qualified. You've already qualified or are you going to qualify? I'm going to qualify. Are you going to qualify? Okay. I have not been qualified yet. King 10 King. I'm qualified. Tony checks. Oh, what? Okay, I check. He's qualified. I'm so scared. I just check. Hashem checks. Probably flop is straight. Turn Jack of Clubs. No. Tony bets 3,100 with his open ender. Oh my God. Joe's turn to pair and it's the best hand. I kind of semi qualified. Oh, you got a draw now. I'm on the way. And Hashem calls. Joe's also got a gut shot draw. River, eight of hearts. Tony bets 6K. Not Tony's usual bomb when he has it. We're both qualified. I've kind of, yeah. You might be qualified more. I call. Hashem calls. Uh, you win. You call? Uh, you I call. Win. Ha, ha, ha. I folded a king. Thanks, Jen. 
Best response ever to someone telling you what they folded. <laughs> so Ashram takes down the first pot of the night, and as Tony G looks for answers from above, let's look at the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and 400 with a $100 ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least $100,000, but can rebuy for up to 500K. And this season, loose cannons don't have the option to come back and boost their profit. Ken knows all about making one shot count, and this is his at a life-changing payday in the NAPT Passport. Action on Joe Hashem, trade deuce, folds. Rankowski, pocket tens. Easy spot for a raise. He limps. Yikes, Ken must have been one of those renegade cops that played by his own rules. Helmuth, king four. Pot. And then there's the other end of the spectrum. Raises to 2,400, Tilly, folds. Tony G out. Nacho Barbero, the Argentinian pro with 9-7, kicks it in. Maybe Ken will limp re-raise. That'd be pretty B.A. <laughs> he does not, just makes the call. Check blind. Coming after me. Now he checks dark, plays by his own rules. 6-9 Jack, Ken is still best, he's checked blind. So Phil bets 2K. Not a bad flop for two tens. Rankowski calls. Yeah, that looks like your flop. To the turn, another Jack. This changes nothing. It could also be my flop. Well, now it's the turn, guys. <laughs> Rankowski checks. Helmuth fires 4K. Not much left, buddy. I got 11-7. Ken's game seems pretty passive, but you can't pedal the nuts. This jack really shouldn't change much at all. There's no hand beating him now that wasn't before. You could have it. Rankowski folds. Good hand, right. All right. After that fold, I got a good mind to bust Ken back down to Sergeant. <laughs> Starting to feel it now, Phil? Feel the power. Are you feeling it, Phil? <laughs> I might be up to like 25,000, so. <laughs> well, even though Phil's gotten off to a rocky start, he's hoping that consulting with a coach will finally be the cure to his big game run bad. Well, I think I've played six times, and, uh, you know, I have some, uh, some horrible stories. I mean, the beats are, are pretty, pretty insane. King! Oh! I mean, what the f But it doesn't matter. You have to find a way to win anyway. Now, some days you just can't help but lose, but I'm not giving up. I'm coming in with a positive attitude. I'm reloading, and this time I brought a consultant, you know, my friend Lane, back-to-back -back flack. Well, I've been friends with Phil for 12 years. When he goes in droughts or running bad or does whatever, he usually calls me, and, and we talk him through, and I guess he just really likes what I have to say. In business, I'm a businessman. When I want to learn about the publishing industry, I hired publishing people to tutor me and to tutor my people. And so why shouldn't I hire someone to take a look at my swing? Well, the advice I'm trying to give him is I want to try to change the fact that he's not so much getting unlucky as just maybe a couple ingredients need to be changed. I don't even know why I play poker anymore, I'll oh, tell you. Stop. You know, Phil is he used to be uh, a, such a student of the game. He's actually a No Limit genius. But being a student of the game, it's kind of changed now. Now he's a character of the game. And that might be out of balance for, for what you need to do to you know, win in, in these big cash games. In life, and poker, if you don't know when you screw up and you don't know when you're unlucky, if you don't know the difference, you're not going to go very far because then you'll never be able to improve. <laughs> Will this get him out of the doghouse? Well, we'll see, right? We don't know. I mean, uh, for both our sakes, I hope he puts a W up on the board. All right, let's do this. Let's do it, kid. You can always tell the faith a coach has by whether he gets paid a flat rate or on commission. In Lane's case, I hope it was the former, and I hope he got it in advance. Well, right now, Lane's pupils stack is down almost $75,000. When did you break out the Clark Kent glasses? The what glasses? The Clark Kent glasses. Oh, the Clark Kent, Kent glasses. glasses. Uh oh what Does that mean when I take them off? Uh -huh. I'm super bad. <laughs> they actually suit you. Or you take them off, you can't see, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like, I mean, it just helps me, like, you know, close up. Ken folds, action on the self-proclaimed man of steel with a queen and a 10. He's on a rush. Lane, see this? Was that a limp? I really hope this isn't the best the brain trust can come up with. <laughs> Phil calls Tilly out, Tony G. The 10 6. Here comes Tony, of course. <laughs> Raises. I could have told you that, Phil. You wouldn't have had to pay me anything. Phil does have Tony dominated, and I can't imagine him limp folding to a raise from Tony. He doesn't. Okay. I check again, Tony. And checks dark. Right, I bet him. 
4,000 in the dark, nice. Tony bets 4,000 in the dark, flop, ace, three, seven. You gotta wonder if Phil and his coach accounted for these kind of curveballs. So after the dark check and the dark bet, it's back on Phil. Who has the best hand with queen high. You're gonna make it nine. You're gonna make it. I'll just call in. Tony's really messing with Phil's head. Honestly, there's no real shame in folding here, just ego. Help you folds. Tony G shows him the bluff. Zing. Yep. God, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I had queen ten high. I knew it was the best hand. I almost, almost raised there. You should have. I limped in to let him uh, show. Uh, I, I played it bad. I should have re-raised him right away. Explain it. Explain it later on a walk-off interview. Nice hand, Tony. Good play. So Tony gets Phil to make another wrong decision, something he's been doing since the beginning of the big game. These two have sat at the table together for a total of 325 hands and have locked horns in 74 of them, including the last hand. Tony has won 42 of those pots for a profit of over 172K versus the Brat. That's some serious ownage, ownage and pwnage. I think Tony was wise to invest in a mind control coach. Action on Phil, ace five. And he limps again. This time with a weak ace under the gun. Time for Coach to make a substitution. A thousand. Tony raises it with the queen jack. Nacho Barbero, 10 9 in the button. Out. He's buying the button. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Action back on Phil. There we go. At least we're still playing those pots. Calls. You want to check? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'll do it again. It's just a, just okay. raise like semi blind and we can get it all in. Here we go again. Phil's checked blind. Tony's bet. Flop 734 rainbow. Phil's flopped the double gutter. There you go. His ace high is good too. I don't even think Tony's mind control can get Phil off this flop. I think you're gonna make another good fold. Good quality fold. <laughs> <laughs> I raise it up a little bit. Once Phil says raise with his stack, he's pot committed. Let's get it all in. I guess I'll just ship it. 18,000 more, whatever it is. 19. Helmuth is all in for 22 3. And Tony folds. I couldn't do much with Queen Jack. Didn't have much fire. Gosh, dang it all. I tried to get you to call the five in the dark before I shipped it. That would have been brilliant if I pulled that off right after you just pulled that off. You pulled it off? Yeah. Uh, we're playing some poker, Phil. You're holding your own. Kind of, I mean, in your own way. A nice hand followed by a nice backhand. So Phil gets some back, but he's still got a long way to go to get even for the session and lifetime against Tony G. See if the comeback continues when the big game returns. Welcome back to Las Vegas, home of the big game. Action continues with hand 28 of 150, and we'll start where all action starts yeah. on Tony G. With King Deuce, folds that trash, Barbero out. Joe Hashram with 8-7. He'll open the pot for a raise to 1,200, cannon out. Phil Helmuth, King Jack, makes the call. Jennifer Tilly, pocket eights. Pot. Aggressive. 54. Re-raises to 5,400. Hashem will fold. This should be a pretty easy fold for Phil. Jennifer doesn't have a super loose image. He's out of position, and he's got a hand that's easily dominated. But he's stacking chips. Oh, man, this is close. I'm not raising. I'm thinking about calling, that's all. If he did call, he's probably facing best case scenario for a three bet. I guess it's not quite the time yet. Coach? <laughs> it's kind of an interesting hand, though. I should, I should tell the world what I'm thinking, but not at the table. Phil Folds. Jen, there's 500 if you can show a three. She, she might have had ace rag. If I had her beat, Show a three I and I'll give you a three 500. I don't have a three. Oh, well. There you go, Phil. She might have had eights or nines or nine ten suited. I mean, that's, those are the hands enough. Your King Jack plays out of, well out of position. Soul read from the soul patch. Now, you don't understand, <laughs> Joe, what I was thinking, so. I'll oh, I think I'll explain it. Can, I allow, can, they, can, they, can they hold a hand while I explain yeah, something to the, the cameras? We want to hear what Phil we is thinking. We can play and still you can explain it. He wants to come explain it to you. Can I come over there and give a, a thing or, or do they have to deal? We can hold. 
Can they hold while I give a Everyone wants say to know what's going on in your mind. I think it's interesting. Yeah. I think we should hold. Guys. We're going to hold. Play, play, the, play the hand, Phil. Right. Play the hand. Yeah. Play the hand, and when you're out of park. Nacho, 5-6, well, folds. I mean, we've started the mm -hmm. hand. It might take two seconds, and you can go. All right. Action on the cannon, pocket queens. Not quite two seconds. They'll call you. I mean, if, if you can write it all down. <laughs> Well, I think it's in the moment. We well, want you, to know what's I know, happening. I understand, right? Tony, that you, I yeah. understand that for some reason you are who you are and you are what you are. Yeah, he was, yeah. Had a, probably had a very bad childhood. Yeah, I think I had did. a pretty good childhood. <laughs> well, I don't believe you. I really don't believe you. It's just a game, Phil. That's what, that's what I understand. This is just a game. Uh -huh. Ken's raised it up. That's what I can't understand, you people. Why does it have to be personal? It's just a game. <laughs> Tony's in. I had King Jack, but here's what I was thinking. I know that Jennifer, if I take a flop and I hit a king or a jack, she's going to bluff every time. I have 21-7. So all I got to do is take a flop, hit a king or a jack, and she's going to move in and double me up. You wanted to hit a king or a jack, profound <laughs> to the flop. 10, queen, four, top set for the cannon, and Tony gets a piece. Tony's got middle pair. Checks. I want to hear what, I want to hear what he's saying. Ken should continue, especially with this wet board. He could get action from Tony with second pair. Now Jen wants in on the conversation. I want to. I want to know what you I think is going you, on in my head. I can't tell you. <laughs> nice hand, girl. He's knocked me out of tournaments before, so it's he true. he knows what goes on in my brain. What did you have? What? That's in. That's incorrect. No, no man knows what's going on in a woman's brain. <laughs> so action on the cannon. Who has a hammer lock on this hand? Let's see if Ken can come up with the right number to keep Tony in the hand. Bets forty-eight hundred. 4,800? This pot's not that big. I think Ken may have just blown his own cover. <laughs> 4,800. Tony folds. Ken got a little overexcited and just got made. He definitely did not make the most of that monster, but still adds 2,200 to his stack. Do you want me to say what I was thinking? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I know what you were thinking. Go, go on. I was thinking you're gonna you're gonna like move me in no matter what hits on the flop. Mm -hmm. So all I have to do is hit a jack, check, and you ship it, and I just get an extra twenty-two thousand for free. That's probably true. I know. Was I right with your king jack? I showed king jack, didn't I? I didn't say it. No. Oh, I didn't even show it. No, I just called it. Yeah. Okay, that was a great read on your part. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he's a world champion. More of the big game coming up right after this. Well, obviously, I'm really excited with Phil Helmuth. I mean, he's the guy I'm here to destroy. I'm, I really want to crush him. I need to crush him. I, I live for that. That's what I live for. That's what I'm focused on every week. I'm waiting. W when will I play with him again? When will I bike him again? Well, will I, when will I humiliate him? And I'm waiting for that. And that, that anticipation is growing on me. And I'm just ready to release all the tension. And for more behind the scenes footage, bonus hands and stats, and footage we had to cut because it was too hot for TV, which was about half of it, be sure to check out the website. Straddle. So Jen will straddle. Yeah. I'll over straddle, I'll over, I'll over. Double straddle from Tony. You're taking away my straddle in our chain. I'm putting more money in there for okay, the, let's for the see, good that players. Was, that's like wasted you can money raise him, You can raise him comfortably knowing that he hasn't looked at his cards. Action folds to Rankowski, who's out. Phil Helmuth, ace jack. A lot of money out there already, and it's unopened. Real money. All right, I opened for the pot. Pot's it. And you looked, right? Mm, well, I think I looked. Allegedly, I looked. Tony. I'm all in. Pot limit, brah. Without looking? Without looking. Pretty sure he looked. Well, you can't be all in. 66. Tony repots it with <laughs> Ace King. <laughs> all right, all right. He slowed down. <laughs> he slowed down a bit. Are you going to save the rest? Not if he believes you haven't looked. Helmuth now facing a raise and an angle shot. Oh, it's hard to believe that you always have a hand against me. Look, you, you, you could see the flop and get rid of it as well. Right? You could play good. Without looking too? I'm not looking. I haven't looked. I don't care. I know it's a random hand, and I've got a random hand. Wow, all that talking makes me think he's strong. I was for sure going to call before that. 15 on top, Tony. He's saying he hasn't looked, though. He most certainly looked. Did no one see him? He's you saying you didn't look. Yeah, you wouldn't lie, Tony, would you? I wouldn't lie. You can there check you my hand if you want. You, you can tell him. You didn't look at either looked. card. I haven't looked. You promise? Ask Joe. Ask Joe. I mean, I haven't I looked. I can't say anything, but I'm not gonna look. That's between you and Phil. He says he haven't looked. He hasn't looked. Uh, I didn't Do see. Do you believe it. him? Yeah. He said he hasn't looked. Only Joe looked.
Did you look at your cards at all? I mean, it's... Look, the it, people at home, no, I haven't looked. Joe's looked well, at my if hand. If you haven't looked, it's kind of an easy decision for me here. We can run it 10 times as well. Well, if you haven't looked, I guess I'll just move in. All right. Phil ships and Tony calls. <laughs> all right, you're close. You're up there. Oh, you lied. Runner? Of course I lied. It's wow. poker, Phil. What do you think this is? That's, yeah. That's messed up. So messed up. <laughs> wow. What do you think, I'm blind? How many times do you want to run well, it? Well, I asked you if you had looked or not. Do you want to run it how many times? I'll let you choose, Tony. Three, three times. times. I three always times. lose, so. You kind of deserve to lose the first I one. I do deserve. I hope you win one. Why would you lie? I mean, no, it's, let's it's consider it totally un, not uncool, man. I mean, it's not right. I, I feel it's just a game. That's etiquette, though. I mean, you never, you, you don't Phil, say you're blind. What happens on this table blind. in play is just a game. We tell whatever so, we want. So when do you tell the, the rules truth? of poker are just thrown out the window? Well, for you. call the floor, man. If you think I, like I, my hand might be dead, then. That's horrible etiquette to say you didn't look at your hand and then, and you know, this bad, really bad etiquette. But what do you think? I'm a kid, Phil. We're talking about etiquette. I'm so a poker you're, you're the kind of guy that goes to the golf course, and when someone's playing you a big money match, you scream in the really? middle of their backswing. You think that's the same thing? Yes, I, I don't know think it's the that's same, the same thing. thing. I don't Listen, think so. if you pulled all the we're top players, we're talking about the strength of our hand, and I'm selling you. That's just about hundred thousand. If we pull the top twenty players, we'll ask about your etiquette, or maybe we'll bet a quarter million. I can million. bet on myself, and I can be very happy just with, with my me. own. You know it's bad etiquette, Phil. This is a you poker know TV it's show. Bad etiquette. This is a poker TV show. Well, don't show. argue with me, then. You don't try to make excuses and lie. Taking me on, you come in my house. No, don't lie. And I'm destroying you. You know every it's bad part etiquette. of the game. You don't say you haven't looked at your cards when you haven't looked at your cards. You don't do that. Okay. Well, it's like I'm a not. rule of poker. It's like it's, well, it's you horrible it? etiquette. Because I thought you hadn't looked at your cards. Well, you, come on, Phil. Well, if you want twenty-five thousand to spend, you can have it. You have to pay How many attention times to the dealing? game, Phil. If you're a professional player, you would pay attention to me looking at my hand. Tony, Will not look, you pay attention? If this is the way you want to win, you can win this. I way. haven't done anything illegal. I looked at my hand. Everyone no, saw it. No, when you flop straights attention. and you say I have a flush draw. Right, you're ha, a policeman. Ha, Could you make a comment? <laughs> <laughs> no. We're doing it three okay, times. Okay, how many times? Three times. Three times. I admit that my you deserve etiquette to lose is the first terrible. one again. I do. So you, it's you true. know, for that. Karmically, he deserves to lose all three. What a villain. I drink your milkshake. <laughs> so they're going to run it three times with the winner of each run taking a third of the pot. Flop. King, nine tray. Tony pairs his king. Phil drawing nearly dead. How happy are you now that it's not running once? If you run it 11 times, you know you'd win like four. Phil taking the high road. I'm going to run 11 times. I drink it up. Turns a jack. Coming That's back. bad for me. I need that jack on the next oh, round. Yeah, yeah. That's really bad well, for me. Unless you get one now. Yeah, unless I get one now. won't get any more. Win any more. Terrible card for Phil. One less jack he can hit on the next run. Give him the jack. River, ace of diamonds. That's kind of fair. Let's even out the deck a bit. All right, so that's one down for Tony G. Daniel Negreanu is our first alternate. He'll take Phil's seat if he busts and decides not to reload. Phil's been felted four times on this show, only reloaded once. You know, Phil, I, like for me, I just want to undersell my hand. I don't know if the way I do it any way I can because it's a heads up pot. That's me. I'm sorry that that's You just me. admitted it was I'm bad sorry etiquette. If I you want to retract? You pot. I'm sorry if I bullied you. I'm sorry. It's not, I don't want to bully you. I'm it's sorry. Not, I feel bad. Look, no problem. Nice hand, man. I mean, you know, you showed your true colors, which is bad for you here. Here comes flop number two. Seven, five, ten. No help to Phil. That's not you really, you. I don't think you're the kind of guy that wants to show your true colors all the time. Well, it's just you, some, your true colors can't escape you. You are who you are, Phil. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's the way I am. Turn number two. Ace of clubs. Phil's not even holding a club, so no flush draw can save him. He's looking for one of the two remaining jacks. River, another five, and Tony G takes the second run. Don't rush. Don't rush. We want to keep you in. This is just agonizing to watch. I want you to have a win. I want you to come back. Come back and show your fans that you're a great player. Captain Hook doesn't really want to kill Peter Pan. <laughs> Flop number three. Queen, queen, king, and Phil picks up some outs. Ooh, now he needs a 10 and backdoor spades. Well, that's actually better. There's four 10s. There was only three jacks. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad. Like, the 10's out as well. Even if Phil hits the 10, Tony can still make a full house. Something, I mean, and then a backdoor flush. No space gone. That's, that's, I have a good feeling about this one, but 
God, the math is just so strong against. How can I get there? Now you'll get there. How can I get there? You will, you will. It's just too. Everyone wants too you to get there. Turn, seven, no help to fill. Okay, the last ten. Three tens, you, want, you can take insurance too. Yet another needle from Tony. Our final river, Phil's gonna need a ten. It's a jack. Whoa, you got there! That's not cool. No, he didn't. No. Sorry, <laughs> I was just joking, Phil. <laughs> you believe me again? Was no, that bad I didn't etiquette too? So Tony, <laughs> so look, you're loaning me fifty thousand, right? Yeah. Okay, look, I, I don't accept it. Okay, no problem. But good game, man. All right, I'm sorry, Phil. I really am. I'm sorry. I think you should retire. I think it's over. I think you you're not there anymore, Phil. Somebody comes out. Good with you. All right, thanks. I think I think you should take your oh coach, get a tandem bike and get the hell out of here. Hmm. This is awful. What Tony's doing is horrific. I think it's bike time. You know it. Take, Good game, everybody. Take your man, right, and you down. boys start driving the bike like this. You guys are outclassed. You don't belong in this level, Phil. Can you believe he lied about his hand? Yeah, Have you that, ever uh, seen that in a high limit game in your life? Tell the truth. It's extremely strong because it's something you would never do. You have you ever have sure. you ever seen no, someone lie I, I, about their hand when they say they're no, in the blind? Ever no, in your life? Tell no, the truth. No, I never. It's horrible etiquette. That's how he has to beat me, lying about stuff. I mean, he's crossed a lot of lines. That's the worst one ever. Bye, guys. I mean, for him to buy that is just incredible. Worst etiquette ever. So Tony G finally finishes off the brat and sends him and his coach riding off on a tandem bike. Welcome back to the big game where we just saw a short stacked Phil Helmuth go broke after Tony G used a questionable play. All right, I open for the pot. I'm all in. I'm not looking, I haven't looked. I, don't care. I know it's a random hand and I know that a random hand. Well, if you haven't looked, I guess I'll just move in. All right, you're close. Oh, you lied. Of course I lied. It's poker, Phil. What do you think this is? What he did was really wrong and it was not, you have to understand that we have we have cheating and we have etiquette, and they run close together. I'm not saying that Tony G cheated. I'm saying that's one of the worst etiquette violations you could have. And so look, that's okay. Those, those things are, that's all water under the bridge because I'm, I'm feeling great about the present and I'm feeling great about the future. Back to the present, Phil Helmuth is gone. And Joe, what about that questionable bit of etiquette from Tony G? Phil got it right. Tony's lie was exactly the same as screaming into someone's backswing. It wasn't cheating, but it was a filthy move, and I can only hope people in poker rooms around the world don't emulate Tony's behavior. And taking Phil's seat at the table is big game regular Daniel Negrano. Kid Poker is sitting down with 200000 to start his night. All right, guys, come on. You know Daniel requests the blue lighting when he comes on the show. Now I'm here to avenge Phil. There you go. Avenge Helmuth. There you go. Not really. I just want to win for myself. You got to see. <laughs> Action on our loose cannon, Ken. Nine deuce of spades, folds. We're taking over Daniel here. out. Canada on this side. Jennifer Tilly, seven six, folds. She's Canadian. Yeah, I'm Canadian. Queen deuce for the G. Raises to 1300 on the button. Nacho Barbero with the king nine. And he will let it go. Jack nine suited for Hashem, defends. I gave, t I gave Phil the bad news. What? Oh, he told the... me to text, because he oh, left. Oh, no. I mean, he told me to text, like, Anytime it was a 50k swing, and I was like, I told, okay, that's so unfair. See, wow. I, because I told Phil I didn't want it to and stick around. Hand, like I don't want it to know what's going on. Now <laughs> his, now his, you know, frowny energy is coming <laughs> through the frowny room. Energy. Talking about yeah. our boyfriend Phil Locke, not the other frowny energy Phil who just left. <laughs> Queen 810, Hashem flops is straight. Tony G with top pair. Typically, he should check the razor, and he does. He gets really. He knows sad. Tony's likely to barrel, and he does. Bets 2,000. Six thousand. Hashem raises to six k. Tony doesn't like to fold when he's qualified, but this board is so dry, Joe can't really be raising a draw. Tony is qualified, and he'll call. Hashem's inner monologue. Cha ching. <laughs> Turn ace of clubs. King Jack just sucked out, but Joe still got the second nuts. Now he'll fire. Bets eleven thousand five hundred. The ace could help Tony get away from this. Or not. <laughs> Tony makes the call and we'll see a river. Since the flop was so dry, Tony may think Joe's raising range is polarized and Joe could be just double barreling. Seven of diamonds on the end. Hashem doesn't have much to be afraid of here. Should have no problem betting for value. 25. Bets 25,000. 
Tony's only got second pair and no kicker. He's been known to fire off his stack. He doesn't call off very often. <clears throat> Okay, hold on. I hope that, that was good. King Jack. Tony G folds and Hashem wins. Not really. Nothing? Not really. A little something something. I flipped the nut. Nine Jack. Nine Jack. So the former world champ picks up a nice payday as Tony's top pair isn't quite enough. One of the pitfalls of being as active as Tony G, and we're talking a VPIP of 62% here, is that when you do flop a hand as good as top pair, it often feels like an absolute monster. Tony Styles, in contrast to that of our loose cannon, who's got a VPIP of 19%, and seems content to play nothing but monster starting hands. Of course, Daniel's VPIP is 0%, but he's only been here for one hand. So I might leave now. I killed Phil. It's yeah. like a nice table now. Till he folds. It's n nothing for me to do anymore. Tony out. I think I'm going to quit next hand. Please don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she says okay. Nacho with 8-4 suited raises. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll get Phil Lack in. Uh, get some yeah. action. <laughs> That'd be weird, right? Yeah. yeah, he'd just be on every show. <laughs> we Phil Lack show. The Are they allowed to do that with Phil and Jennifer both at the table? I don't like to play at the same table with Phil. Oh, they would. Why he not? makes frowny faces at me when I'm in the pot. <laughs> he shakes his head. <laughs> That's like the sucker dad, right? He's yeah, just, every know... time I try to put any money in, he's like... <laughs> so Hashem's called. Flop, 8-7-9. Nacho flops middle pair. Hashem flops top pair. Let's see if Nacho continues. He does. Bets 2,600. <laughs> Joe calls. Middle pair will be good a lot of the time, but at the moment, Nacho is drawing pretty thin. Turn four of diamonds, two pair for Nacho. Even though a potential flush just came in, Nacho should probably still keep betting. Stacking chips. Bets 5,400. The board just got a little bit worse for Joe's top pair, even if he can't put Nacho on 8-4. But if Nacho were semi-bluffing the flop, there's a good chance the four of diamonds made him. 12,000. Hashem raises to 12,000. This is kind of a weird merge raise, meaning it's not really big enough to fold out anything that has a pair of nines beat. But instead, he's maybe trying to buy himself a cheap showdown by getting Nacho to slow down on the river. And Nacho makes the call. Joe can't love this spot. River's a tray. Let's see if Nacho does slow down. He checks, and Hashem checks behind. He's not gonna like what he sees. And Nacho takes a pot worth 33.8. Good luck here. That's the correct response when you make a hand with a piece of cheese like that. Nacho cheese. I heard you are a pretty lucky guy overall, Nacho. That's yeah. the word on the street, that you're, you, you win a lot of tournaments, that you won five out of eight tournaments last year, which is impossible. Five out of eight. He played wow. eight events and he won five of them. Wow. Oh, that's not true. Is that not true? No. How many was it? I, I played many events. And maybe I was in eight final tables or seven final tables and I won five. Oh, and you five. won five? Oh, that's a yeah. big deal. Anyone can do that. <laughs> you won five events? Yeah. How much did you cash? 1.6. Wow. Okay. That is huge. Welcome back to the big game. Huff and Stapes guiding you through the action as we continue with hand 41 of 150. Action will start on Argentinian pro Nacho Barbero. 7-5 offsuit, internationally known as a bad hand. Joe Hashem, 9-4 <laughs> of diamonds. Out. Loose cannon, Ken Rankowski, the retired cop with the ace, 10 of spades. Big suited ace, unopened pot. <laughs> I look like a predator just now. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad there's no Chris Hansen for poker chips. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll let you live. Ken's raised. Daniel's out. It's on Gentilly with the 10 6. Out. Tony, 4 6. I will just because you're the cannon. I want to lose, and you're a policeman. Ex police. I like, playing. I like playing with you. Tony calls. Ace, King, Ace trips for the cannon. Tony has 6 high and checks. This is definitely a spot where Ken could check behind if he wanted. Oh, that's big, that just take her. That, that big breath, just like, I don't want to. <laughs> he doesn't want to let you out. I didn't want to overbet the pot like I did last time. Can I time. see the hand just this time, one time? Come on. No, one time. I don't, I don't show. 
So Ken takes it down just by threatening to bet, Joe. And so far, Ken has not put these pros to a decision. He's only raised 12% of his hands pre-flop and continued the passivity post-flop with an aggro factor of just one, making it obvious that when Ken does bet, he's got the goods. Lucky for him, he used to work undercover, so I would suggest Ken put on a different mustache and change his persona. So you're no longer a cop? No, no. Nope. Retired? Like Retired just a couple months ago. Cool, now you're just gonna play poker? That's the plan. All right, depending if you win 100,000 here or not. Exactly. <laughs> gonna, gonna relocate somewhere warm and take up poker under a palm Vegas. tree somewhere. Yeah, well. I'm sure Ken would be welcome at Daniel's table anytime. Doesn't seem to be good to me. Gentilly straddled for 800. Action will be on Tony G with Ace Queen. Why do I have to do anything inconvenient? I'm gonna raise it. Raises to 1700. A little bit. So I don't have a good hand. Barbero, 9 8 of spades. Small raise for a straddled pot. Nacho's in the cutoff, so it's relatively late position if he wants to play these suited connectors. Nacho likes them and makes the call. Hash them out. Rankowski folds. Daniel with his favorite hand in the big blind, but lets it go. Queen eight for Tilly. She's in at a discount, totally priced in. And makes the call. Jennifer is dominated by Tony, but dominating Nacho. Three-way action to the flop. Six, four, seven, couple of spades. Barbero up and down and a flush draw. Tilly checks. Tony does have the best hand with ace, queen high. I want to bet that flop. But Nacho's got a huge draw. Tony bets 3K. Nacho's got so much equity, he could raise here if he wanted to. I mean the location of the casino. The city, yeah, that's what I hear. It's a lot of people from there. But he just calls, and Tilly will watch the rest of this hand. Qualified? Nacho, the joke is that everyone's always qualified. Turns four of hearts. Just it, Vegas. Tony G checks. Tony's given up the lead. Let's see if Nacho wants to take it. There's a chance Tony could fold, and if not, then more money in the pot in case he hits his draw. Nacho bets 7,000. You can see Tony considering a call. If he had the best hand on the flop, he'd still have the best hand now on the turn. And Tony makes the call. I'm sure Nacho would have rather won it right there, but he's still got plenty of outs. That's not one of them. Big Brick. Brick a dune. Tony checks. Looks like Nacho's going to try to bluff this with nine high. Bets 12K. Not a big bet, and every draw missed. Good call. Tony makes the call with ace high. Not much. Wow. Put you a night nine. I swear to God, I put you a night nine. Oh, 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 only a nine. <laughs> I, I swear to God. Well, I didn't know that. But I can't, I, I have to trust my, my, wow. stoop, my brain, you know? Tony, gee. Tony. Well, I'm a friendly guy. I mean, what, well, what hand can he have calling a race? I mean, it's not many. I mean, can you have a 6 4 7? I sound next call. I thought he'd bet more on the river, but I was automatic calling. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's, 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 it's fine. You lost money. It's fine. I was value betting. Yeah, I know. Last, last, next time you I get put me. your knight high. Now, sometimes even I get a hand. I'm, they're not like discriminating against me having a hand. Tony G makes a stellar read and welcomes the Argentinian tourney pro to the big game. Welcome back to the big game from Las Vegas, where Tony G's in the middle of giving the table a pep talk. I started the show losing like 600,000, and now I'm a winner, which is, which is, I need a lot of luck, but it just shows you that if you're losing like 10 million, don't stop, keep going, because it could turn around. <laughs> <laughs> right? The gambler's mantra. First of all, Tony wasn't stuck 600K heading into the big game this week. He was actually up 90K, and I'm pretty sure this is just shenanigans to try to get Phil Helmuth back in the game. <laughs> Looks down at 10-4. Let's it go. Over and out. Nacho, ace-5. If you raise, we get it in on the flop. This would be a little loose from the hijack. <laughs> Raises the 1300. Action on the 2005 world champ, Joe Hashem, pocket sevens. Joe could put in a raise here, but most players just call with two sevens, and Joe could be a little concerned that Nacho's not just hijacking off over there. Hashem makes the call. Couple of jacks for the cannon. Now Ken's gonna want to raise here to make sure he's not taking a flop six ways. Well, Tony G's out, Joe, so it's really only five ways. But I see your point. Do you? Those look like raising chips. 
Raise 42. Re-raises to 4,200. Let's see who wins Daniel's inner battle. Will it be suited connectors in a three-bet multi-way pot, or I'm out of position? Just look at that inner struggle. Daniel loves playing with loose cannons. And not crazy about folding to begin with. Makes the call. Story checks out. Tilly with Queen Trey, and she'll have to ditch that, and does. Back on Nacho. When the cannon's in the pot, the pros tend to play pretty loose. Pretty, pretty loose. Barbero makes the call. Hashem's getting like the dumbest odds ever. If you factor in implied odds, he's calling. Aussies move at their own pace, though. Oi! And Joe calls. Okay, we all wasted time. We did our little, every one of us, we did the, we know we're calling. Yeah, whenever you call, everybody everybody knew it was. We all know we're calling. It's just a little, we're trying to be like Jennifer Tilly there a little bit. Well, Actress. Oh, yeah. Four-way action. Jack, Jack, Trey, quads for the cannon. Time to get back into deep cover. Check. Already. Daniel checks. Yeah. Nacho passes. Joe might think he has the best hand, but checks. This board's fairly dry, so it's totally cool to let someone catch up a bit. And Ken will check to the turn. I like it. Four of hearts. Daniel checks. Nacho checks. Still not too scary a board for Joe's hand, and Ken gave up the lead. 12,000. 12, Joe bets 12K. Anything Ken does here other than fold will look strong, so I think his best shot at looking weak is to just call. That's what you did last time. When? 12,000. Last night, Hashem bet 12-5 on the river against the loose cannon. Ken made the call with Queens, and Joe showed him two pair to take it. It was 12,500 last time. Talking when you have a big hand, that's classic loose cannon. <laughs> Ken calls. Daniel's done with it. Nacho's got a gut shot draw and not much else. He's getting a terrible price to draw to it, especially considering he could be and is drawing dead. And Mux. This isn't a super cooler, so I'm not really sure how much value Ken will be able to get out of Joe. River, deuce of spades. Nacho would have made his gut shot. Don't tilt yet, Nacho. Joe was the last aggressor. We'll have to see if Ken's call on the turn slows him down at all. And look at that, Ken's praying Joe fires off some money. I'm all in. He's all in. Cool. Four jacks, I guess. Four jacks. Ken shows the quads. <laughs> wow. Whoops. I guess. Wow. The cannon doubles up. Nice hand. If Thank I you. see the reaver, wow. That's what makes sense, okay, I guess. Okay, now fold everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then take your wife and go shopping. I'm going to let you do that. I'll probably, I'll probably just make a mess. Cannons are crushing. Wow. That was a good card on the river. Tough, Hashem. 67. Wow. Nice hand. Thank like you, sir. Cop equivalent drug kingpin turns himself in. So an absolute dream scenario for the loose cannon. Joe Hashem tried to make a move at the pot after Ken flopped quads. And with that double up, Ken goes from just trying to make a profit to being a contender for the loose cannon title and the NAPT passport. He ends up 77K and is 86,000 from catching the leader, Massimiliano Martinez. And that misstep puts a serious dent in Hashem's stack. He finishes nearly 46K in the red on the night that Phil Helmuth made his fifth big game bust. Wow, Ken. Hey. What were you feeling when he said all in? <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Cha -ching. <laughs> Cha -ching. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. That's the music to my ears. Sorry. That's nah, cool, man. Are you content with the stack? I am now. Yeah, this is great. You know, are you going to gamble it up more? <laughs> of course. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. I got three more days. Tony, you sent Phil Helmy bike. on his bike. Bike. On his tandem bike with Lane Flack. Well, and it only took 42 hands. I mean, he did well. He, he battled hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for tonight. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. Another night of big mouths and big bets on the big game for Stapes. This is Huff saying <laughs> ship it. Tony, are you going to miss your buddy, Phil? Oh, of course. Of course. I want to bring the game, him back. Did you? No, I wanted him to stay. I would have been, I put him on a, on a drip feed to stay. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> no, I love the guy. I want He's a gentleman and a scholar. He's misunderstood, just like Lady Gaga. <laughs>